Good evening, everyone. Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with Jaspie's OPS break. Not not on base plus slugging percentage. No, it's their Optic Prism Select break. O, P, and S. Basketball mixture number one. Pick your team number one. Featuring these boxes right here. And a very big thank you to all of these folks who got into it and picked their teams in this break. On the 28th, Matt Stone with that last spot. Mojo, you're a wizard, Matt. All right. So we're gonna start. I'm gonna start actually with this right here first. That's the 1819 Prism uh, Super Value Rack Pack Edition. Then we'll move into Old Select, then New Select, or no, then Optic. Then we'll close out with the latest Select. Uh, half the Elite Eight is set, ladies and gentlemen. Just been watching basketball and baseball all day. So it looks like uh, we got Gonzaga it's moving on. Purdue is moving on. Texas Tech is moving on. And Virginia is moving on. Pulled away from Oregon just at the very end. Open up packs to open up packs. Some uh, NBA scores tonight. Pistons beat the Magic 115 to 98. Sixers over the uh, wow, Andre Drummond had 18 rebounds, 18 and 18. Sixers over the Nets 123 to 110. Joel Embiid 39 points, 13 rebounds, six assists. Miami Heat beat the Dallas Mavericks. Luka Doncic almost a triple double. Goran Dragic with a triple double, 23, 12 rebounds and 11 assists. Raptors beat the Knicks 117-92. Mitchell Robinson had 21 rebounds. Pascal Siakam for the Raptors, 31 points. Rockets beating the Nuggets tonight, 112-85. James Harden going off for 38 points. Just seems it's just normal, right? Six rebounds, six assists. Bucks beat the Clippers, 128-118. I guess Giannis twisted an ankle? Pelicans beat the Kings 121-118. Julius Randle with 34 points, 10 rebounds, 3 assists. Wish the Lakers never would have let Julius Randle go. And the Spurs beat the Cavs 116-110. Marta Rosen, 25 points, 2 rebounds, 8 assists. Larry Nance Jr., a double-double, 13 and 11. 4 assists. Is there anything? I mean, I guess we're just really waiting for the playoffs, right? That's basically it.
But I guess there's still questions about who the, in the East, who the 6, 7, and 8 seed will be. Looks like the Pistons, Nets, and Heat, 6, 7, and 8 respectively, you know, are within a game of each other where they could switch seeding, switch position. And it looks like the Orlando Magic are still on the outside looking in. I guess the Hornets are mathematically still in it too. So Hornets can, can still edge their way in. In the West, everything's pretty much locked up in the West. OKC and San Antonio fighting for, for seeding, seven and eight. Basically, they want to avoid being the eighth seed and avoid Golden State. If Golden State hangs out to that one spot, so there's a little bit of action there, a little bit of battling there for positioning. And the Kings are on the outside looking in. So I guess they mathematically still have a shot. Do they? They're not officially eliminated yet. I guess a lot has to happen because they, they're they're like a number of games back. But I guess if I guess if the Thunder and Spurs lose out, and the Sacramento Kings win every game, I suppose I suppose that'll do it. Well, only like a handful of games left, right? Ten games left, maybe six games. Not very many. And opening up all these rack packs here. Anyone watching who's actually in this break? I've heard no no signs, no whispers from anybody. Chat right there. Joshua Kogier, green. These these ones aren't numbered, but they will ship. It's Kyle Kuzma. Oh, okay. We've got some people here. All right, nice. There's Lonzo. I guess Big Baller Brand is done, ladies and gentlemen. That was interesting while it lasted, which probably means that LeVar is done as well. Brandon Ingram, blood clot surgery complete. Looks like he's healthy. Looks like he'll be okay for the start of next season. Luka Doncic, this guy's okay. Are these silver still selling well? Nice one for the Dallas Mavericks, Rich Schmidt. I'm assuming they are. This is your. This is probably your rookie of the year right here, right? I think the big baller brand, I feel like was. I like the idea behind it conceptually, like the idea of someone saying, hey, I'm going to take my, my financial future into my hands. It's a, the entrepreneurial spirit, right? But I don't think, I think they were, they were ill-equipped to be the pioneers in that. See what happens to him in the summer. Does he get traded? Who's going to be really good, Jesse? Here are the uh, red, white, and blue barbershop or, or airmail postage 
international mail postage cards right here that, ex that are exclusive to this set. Oh, Lonzo. Yeah, I don't hope he doesn't... I hope, he, I hope he stays with the Lakers. I mean, at this point... At this point, you may as well just not trade anybody. All right, now let's move into some old select. That's 16, 17 select. So Ben Simmons rookie cards could be could cover this cover multiple spots in this break. I think the Lakers should just stand pat. Why why I mean there's you know nobody wants nobody seems like they want to do business with the Lakers. Fine. Don't do business with the Lakers, you know. Just develop the young core. Tell them, hey, you guys are it. That's it. We tried. We were going to be honest. We, we were going to move you. You would too if you could get Anthony Davis. Didn't work out. Now you're our guys. You know, we realize the league doesn't want to do business with us. We can't get too cute and try to trade and no one's going to do us any favors. So F it. We're going to stick with you guys, you know, and let's just do it. Let's see what we can do. Kyrie Irving is a free agent. I don't, I don't think he's going to re-sign with Boston. He might want to reunite with LeBron. There's other free agents after this offseason and the next offseason. Anthony Davis will be a free agent. You know, we can get him then. Without having to lose anybody. Now, I know LeBron is in a rush. But, at, I mean, at this point, I'll just be like, listen. All right. There's Emmanuel Moutier to 175. I mean, I, I'd like this guy on the team or something like. You know what I mean? There's, there's like some, some under the radar type of stuff. Not the big names where you can get some players, right? Get some shooters. You know what I mean? Moody for the Nuggets goes to Darren McKenzie to 175, by the way. We got Doug McDermott, Sparks Relic for the Bulls. That'll be for Ryan. The tricolor Rashad Vaughn. I think those are they are numbered in. In football, select football, they're numbered. In basketball, they're not. And there's Carl Anthony Towns, a wild cat, has appeared for the Timberwolves. Brian Watford. All right, Jesse's saying, hey, LeBron just needs one ring. Just one. To make this move to L.A. worth it. That's right. That's for his legacy. That's all he needs. That is out of 99. I guess this camera has a hard time focusing on these super shiny prism cards here. Select cards. Chris Anderson. You guys remember Chris Anderson? The 299. Rex is saying, if, every, if, any, if everyone wants to keep comparing LeBron to Jordan... I don't think any serious sports fan actually does that, right? I think this is just like, it's just like talk radio fodder just to get people fired up about a non-issue. They're completely different players. Henry Ellenson, die cut, autograph. I feel like it's just, 20-year-old kids on Reddit and sports talk radio hosts who want to, like, get people riled up. <laughs> we'll just start. We'll just start a, a, a LeBron Jordan conversation. Yeah, LeBron is a tight end. 
be unstoppable. All right, let's do some 1819 Donruss Optic Basketball. Maybe find some of this guy. Kobe Bryant was on the James Corden show the other night. I guess James, I don't watch these late night shows, but I guess James Corden had like some feature where you have to eat like some crazy thing, like uh, you have to eat like a hermit crab or answer this question or something. It looked like a funny bit. Um, but James Corden asked Kobe like who the who the three greatest basketball players are in order between Kobe, Michael Jordan, and and LeBron. And he didn't want to answer the question. He's like, he knows. He's like, I'm going to stir up all this controversy on the talk radio circuit, blah, blah, blah. And then it was like, he was supposed to eat. Yeah, that's right, Jesse. He had to eat cow tongues. He took, took a look at the cow tongue, examined it a little bit, and he was like, nope. <laughs> he was like, it'll be me, Jordan, LeBron. Done. Or he said, Jordan, me, LeBron. No, I think he said himself. Well, no, I mean, if I was in his shoes, I'd say the same thing too. You know, you have to, you, to achieve the success that Kobe has, that um, you have to have, I mean, this is for, this is whether you're a basketball player, whether you are the CEO of a business, you know, you're the president of an operation, you know, like you're the GM of a sports team, you're running, you, you're the commanding officer of a platoon or whatever the case may be like you got to have that kind of confidence you know in order to be successful you know i mean if i don't act like you know there's you know i act like i there there are a million people watching this show even though there's 27 people watching right now you know what i mean like you got to have that kind of mentality mamba mentality to you know, to, to really kind of get to whatever level of success. There's Elia Kobu, rated rookie autograph for the Suns. As for the Jordan Kobe thing, you can't really I mean they're more similar than than LeBron and 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 Jordan. I think you can make a better sort of there's a better discussion point there. You know, it's Jordan always had set the bar, so it's hard to it's hard to say that Jordan's better than Kobe. Even in, you know, I love Kobe, but it's like, it's hard to do that because he set the bar. All the marketing that Kobe and LeBron benefits from, the, the way the league has expanded, the moves that Kobe has, that he copied from Michael Jordan, among others. Oh, Jordan set the bar. So it's hard, to, it's hard to ever say that anybody's greater than Jordan just because he changed the game not only in the way it's played, just single-handedly, but... But also in terms of how much money the league is making. I mean, he he really branded the league, as, you know, in a much different way as a money maker. Now, I mean, we there people. I mean, if you look at your basketball history, think about it, like there were finals, NBA finals in the '80s that were tape delayed. Like, they weren't even live. You know, think think about that. By the late 80s, early 90s, through, you know, the with the way Jordan blew things up and Nike and Gatorade and all the commercials and 
And like that's like the earliest form of leveraging like that kind of TV media market for these athletes. And then huge. There it is. Game over. And then Jordan Brand. Done. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Jordan, best offensive. It's hard to start measuring that because you'd have to, I guess, just measure between, like, guards, right? Because then you start adding, like, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, but those are, like, different, different positions, so. But I think, I think Jordan, Michael Jordan is so transcendent. I think that's the difference. You know, when these when this Kobe Kobe Michael Jordan argument comes up, Jordan is so transcendent that you can never really compare anybody to to him. Now, if you want to base it off of counting stats, like how many chips and how many points and how many assists and how many teams or not many teams or this or that or whatever, I mean, I guess we can we can go round and round on that forever, and that's part of the fun. I get it. Ooh, do I see a zebra here? But, right, Daniel's saying the only wait in line for Jordan shoes, not anybody else. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like Jordan has set the bar. And it's, it's, like, it's like trying to compare bands to, like, you know, someone as big and mainstream like the Beatles. There's Miles Turner, Jersey and Otto. You know, is this band better than the Beatles? This band has as has, has many number one hits in the same calendar year as the Beatles. And... You know, it's it's always it's always a thing, but when you're a bar setter, I mean, you just transcend the rest. And Beatles, same thing, business wise, they changed the way music, like the economy of music, has has been built. The way live shows are, the way you market live shows, the way you tour, the money you make off of touring, merchandising. That changed the face of it. They wrote their own songs. Music publishing. They weren't using songwriters. They wrote their own songs. They made all the money. Get that money. There's Steph Curry. And that's what Jordan did too. That's why some of the older guys pre pre Jordan are uh you know, pre Jordan guys who are so like salty because they didn't you know they didn't make that kind of money. Charles Barkley didn't make Jordan Jordan money, right? Although Charles Barkley did have that sort of media presence. Charles Barkley came to the league a little bit later. He might have been making big money too. Oh, nice. John Samus says, when you went to your dad's house, Arkansas, right? Is that what you said a while back? Found all your old Jordan magazine covers, newspapers with the champions from the 80s and 90s. Media guides from the first three years. It was great. Did you, did you bring them back? There's Luka Doncic for Rich, another one. And the zebra is Lonnie Walker. Nice. This is, these generally fall one per case. Not guaranteed, but generally fall one per case. That goes to Kevin O and the Spurs. Yeah, I mean, you, Jordan was like the Beatles. You put the Beatles on a lunchbox, it would sell, right? You put 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 Jordan's face on a thermos, it would sell. You know, so he really changed the the that sort of marketing landscape of it. Players being able to use their likeness to make money instead of just the teams making money off of them. So he changed the business of basketball. So it's hard to compare Kobe or LeBron or any of these guys. Zion, you know, or Steven Jackson. Steph Curry. This is for the Warriors. I, I I always thought this old Warriors logo was like pretty terrible, right? It's not a good logo, right? Did anyone like that? Maybe if you if you were the right age, you grew up in that right era, and that's all you that's what you grew up with, I guess maybe. It's kind of bad. Steven Jackson for the bad bad logo Warriors. That goes to Craig K. There's Tyreek Evans die cut at a 249. Horrible logo. John Samuelson agrees. Jesse agrees. Jordan Barkley hosted SNL. Kobe or LeBron never did. LeBron never has? I know Kobe hasn't done a SNL. I feel like that's not his thing. I feel like LeBron would have, though. Yeah, I could see LeBron doing well hosting SNL. Kobe's just busy winning Oscars. Grayson Allen. Jordan doesn't have Oscars. 93 out of 299 for the Jazz. Jonathan Best. 
And there's Aaron Holiday, 25 out of 99. Part of the very athletic Holiday family. And that goes to the Pacers. That'll be for Greg. Greg on the board with a relic. And that is that, ladies and gentlemen. Marvin Bagley, non-refractor base at the end. There you have it, folks. Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. That was the Jazbees 4-box OPS basketball mixer. Pick your team number one from jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'm sure there'll be other mixers and stuff like that in store, so check it out for more hoops and more hoops talk. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.